this week we're going to turn to two writers who had very similar experiences in um, white boarding schools. This was very typical of what was happening during this time period that as part of the colonial process and the assimilation process that um, white Christian churches would open their doors and create schools to assimilate the Native American children. Now, both of these um, writers are going to be sharing their experiences about being in those particular schools. Um, there was a, a saying, so to speak, um, among these different schools that they wanted to quote, kill the Indian and save the man. So it was very, very much believed on the part of um, whites and the federal government that, that they were doing good. Um, and so in these texts, you can sort of see a tension and the struggles that these young children would have faced as they were being um, assimilated into, into white American culture from um, their Native American cultures. So the first one we're going to look at is um, a bit, a chapter from a larger work by um, Francis LaFleche, or um, his um, Native American name would be translate as Iron Eye. He was from an Omaha Indian family, and his dad was one of the principal chiefs. Um, his larger piece, which is a memoir, is called The Middle Five, and it is it recounts his time at a Presbyterian boarding school. And in it, he talks about the challenges of learning the ways of whites. Um, and it's a really good example um, of some of the ways that assimilation was practiced um, and a lot of that had to do with um, religion and um, conversion from Native American um, religious beliefs to Christian ones and so what we see in this particular um, piece called the splinter the thorn and the rib um, are the great similarities of tribal origin stories and the Genesis account of creation and so I want to point out a couple of, of lines from the text to kind of w walk you through this a little bit this first um, quote comes from the very <coughs> beginning of the story or close to the beginning of the story um, when the um, aunt <coughs> where he, when his aunt has seen him and he has pig's fat on his foot, on his toe. And he, she asked, what's going on? And he said, well, it's to draw out the splinter. And she just thinks that is uproariously funny and says this, your white chest might as well hitch a bit of pig fat to their wagon and expect it to draw a load up the hill. So in other words, her her way of extracting the splinter was very different than the the way that the the nurse in the boarding school uh, would um, extract the splinter. So you see, even in this splinter story, what we're setting up here is two ways of looking at or doing the same thing, and each of these different ways thinks the other is completely ridiculous. This splinter story sets the tone for the similarities um, in the creation stories. So one of the boys decides to tell the story of the thorn where the woman is created out of a thorn. Um, and then the, another boy responds, well, that's just like the Bible story of Adam and Eve. And there you have the rib, the, the, con the Judeo-Christian concept that woman was crafted from Adam's rib. And, and what you see in both of these accounts is how ridiculous each account is 
to someone not versed in that particular religious ideology. Um, for uh, those who practice a Judeo-Christian tradition, this idea that woman came from a thorn um, is just as ridiculous as the rib story would be to a Native American. And so that, that, that parallel is definitely supposed to be drawn here. Um, as we see the boys trying to negotiate their past that makes sense to them and the present one with the whites that at times is confusing and if not confusing or in addition to being confusing may be completely ridiculous. And we see that <coughs> um, tending toward the ridiculous in the section where the, the boys are getting all confused um, about whether it's the snake or the serpent or Satan or the devil that tempts Adam and Eve in the garden in the, in the Genesis story. And the boys get all confused about the different um, names for the same thing and you can just see their befuddlement as they're, as they're walking through all of this. You can also see that some of the boys are buying into um, the white ways much easier than other boys. And we have um, Lester saying, you know, don't make fun of the old man boys. He's here to help us. He wants to do us good. In other words, you know, we're here to, to be um, educated in, in the white ways, but then, you know, have other boys who um, are, are not as accepting of that. So in this, in this little account, you see a whole lot going on as far as two cultures colliding and the confusion that arises w when that occurs and these young boys trying to negotiate all of this. <coughs> 